No, the password is good. But somehow my um
Okay, uh, thank you for coming back in a fairly orderly fashion. You're a little more uh, disorderly than you were this morning. Um, I, I, I'm sorry to be rude to you. I love you all, but uh, we have very limited time here. Um, so in this first session, uh, we're looking at uh, corpora databases. Um, we have a number of talks. The format is that our speakers have uh, 10 minutes for their talks. And, um, and then five minutes for questions. They have a total of 15 minutes, and I will be giving them the hook at 15 minutes. I'll be very strict. You will see me being very strict. Um, and uh, um, also an announcement about the Wi-Fi. Uh, we are working towards a solution, and we'll have one after lunch. If you are somebody who desperately needs to get on the Wi-Fi, you are working on your talk or something, please, um, see Phoebe right here in the front row and she will she will help you out but um, we're very sorry about that uh, <laughs> yeah. um, so our first speaker Alicia thank you thank you my name is Alicia Vogelving and I work as a developer at Wikimedia Sferia the Swedish chapter of the Wikimedia Foundation and I'm here today to talk to you about books. Before we start, please raise your hand if you think we need more items for books on Wikidata. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. <laughs> if you look at all the fine work that Wikisite editors have accomplished, one thing that stands out is that academic articles are way, way more popular than books. Last time I checked, there were about 42,000 instances of version, edition, or translation, and 19 million instances of scholarly article. Why? Well, there could be many reasons, but the most obvious one is the availability of data sources. If we want to get more books on Wikidata, we need access to linked open data sets about books released under a compatible license. Fortunately, more and more glams around the world are embracing the open data movement. One of, one of them is the National Library of Sweden. In 2011, they released a large part of their data under the CC0 license. This data set is called the Swedish National Bibliography. It has a long history. It has its roots in the 19th century. And what it is, is a catalog over all the books and magazines and newspapers published in Sweden. And by all I mean, there are some 700,000 items in there right now. And this number is growing steadily. About 15,000 printed books were added in 2016. And this very large data set is available under a CC0 license. Now, to make a long story short, the National Library of Sweden is doing some very exciting things with their union catalog right now, as they recently became the first national library in the world to implement the Bib Frame 2 data model. It is a linked data model based on a structure that is easily understood by machines. It is also quite compatible with Wikidata. 
in fact the same basic structure featuring the distinction between work level and additional level items has been proposed by the wiki project books on Wikidata and is being used by some active editors. In summer 2018, the National Library of Sweden partnered up with Wikimedia Sweden to investigate how to use all this data and this structure to enrich the Wikimedia projects, especially Wikidata. Now we are talking about several hundred thousand items. This size itself would make this, would make for a very impressive contribution. But as we were just starting out, we needed a small, well-defined data set to work with. Because if you start out thinking that you have to upload 700,000 items to Wikidata. Well, you've got a problem. <laughs> and we wanted to work with data that is useful to others in order to both encourage feedback about our project and our cooperation and to make our work more visible. So we turned to the Swedish Wikipedia. Our goal was to identify the books that are most frequently used as sources in articles. Well, it turned out that some of this work was already done for us. If you are curious about which ISBN numbers are used in the references in the Wikipedia version of your choice, that data is out there. And after we sorted it by frequency, we then used the National Library's API to get some basic information on the titles. What we found is that there were just over 100 books which were used at least 50 times, and almost 800 books which were used at least 10 times each. We could then say that these top couple hundred books were interesting to the Swedish Wikimedia community. Now, I think this part is very important. Why exactly should we care about Wikipedia? Right now, there is no way to integrate bibliographical items from Wikidata in the Swedish Wikipedia. There is a template in the English Wikipedia, which generates a citation from a Wikidata item. Even though it works, it has not been implemented officially. You are not encouraged to use it in the main article space. But it shows the technical possibility is there and that it can look good. So, then we went and took the data set from the National Library. It was in JSON, which was very nice because it was much, much more pleasant to work with than RDF XML. Please do encourage your local GLAM to use JSON for their data. <laughs> we have not yet uploaded the 700,000 books. We have uploaded a couple hundred, about 500 of them. And here is what we learned about bibliographic data in the process. One, communication with the data provider is crucial. For example, the National Library of Sweden has an API, but it would be inefficient to fetch every single item. Fortunately, we communicated with their developer team who provided us with a dump of the whole national bibliography database. Two, engagement is very important from both the data provider and the Wikimedia community. That's why we are currently planning a hackathon 
to which we have invited developers from the National Library of Sweden. We want them to get a hands-on experience of using their own open data in Wikidata and Wikimedia context. They are very excited. Three, start small. Just uploading the first couple hundred items gave us a taste of how the data is structured, what challenges we are going to meet when mapping and uploading the data. Four, think Wikidata. Think about how the data will work in the existing infrastructure. In our case, there is an external identifier property on Wikidata, the Libris URI, which we use to connect the books to the library catalog. And the same property is also used for authority posts. We also got a lot of inspiration from the Wiki Project books on Wikidata, and we are following their way to model book items. And finally, remember that good data is linked data. Something that helped us tremendously is that many of the books in the National Bibliography data set have their author fields linked to the authority posts of the relevant authors. Because of that, we could automatically connect the book's items to the author's items instead of using the author name string property, which you can do if you don't, if you can't locate the item of the author. If you have any questions, now it's time. There's a new version of Java available. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, on the list of uh, yeah, I can hear. You. Okay, is on the list of um, books, sort of most cited ones. There were several reference item reference books. Yeah, and I was wondering if you had considered uh, or assessing the um, other popular reference sources are talking to reference librarians about um, common reference works that might be good additions for future citing by uh, different Wikimedia participants. So not just those, but maybe others as well. So then to add those sort of preemptively or even as a kind of a recommendation for sort of solid sources um, and maybe especially sources that had open access versions. No, we haven't worked uh, from the point of view of content. We just focused on, on the numbers and on looking into what's popular right now. And we did that in order to get more feedback from the community. Uh, the, what problems have you run into when you try to map in the library data to the wiki data? Major ones. Um, major ones, I would say inconsistencies in how different fields are formatted. For example, uh, the field for how many pages a book has, it, it could be hard to process if it has uh, an abbreviation for page or if it doesn't. I can see there is agreement here. <laughs> I think we have one time for one more here. Yeah. Thank you. So it's uh, actually, it's a question about your statistics at the beginning of the talk. Yeah. So you said there were uh, 45,000 books on Wikidata, but you about. have you just counted uh, instances of editions? And all, uh, uh, and, yes. And not, okay, so not the uh, instances of the book. Of book. No, th that's the problem with uh, how data about books is structured. There is no 100% agreement on how this should be done. And we are following the, the work edition distinction. Okay, so you just counted the number of editions. Yes. Maybe one more question here. Yes. Oh, can you provide us a way to find the 500 books in Wikidata that you've uploaded? 
uh, there should be a link to the Sparkle query in the slides. And the slides can be found linked in the Etherpad for this whole session. Kind of a similar theme that we've got, really. Um, yes. Yeah, so, good morning, or bore da, as we say in Welsh. In Welsh. Um, so yeah, I'm Jason. I'm the National Wikimedian at the National Library of Wales. Um, and today I'm going to talk to you about our project that we're just getting started on, uh, called the Sum of All Welsh Literature, which is basically about putting the sum of all Welsh literature into Wikidata and how that kind of links together with Wikisite. So if we sort of go right back to the beginning, um, the main brief for the National Library of Wales is to preserve and give access to recorded knowledge um, about Wales and its people. We've got over 40,000 manuscripts, we've got 6 million uh, printed items, and that includes books, periodicals, journals, serials, all sorts of different things. I mean, if you read our mission statement, it's um, quite obvious to any from a wiki background that, that there's a lot of alignment um, between our mission statement and working with Wikimedia. Um, no other platform allows us to give access in the way that Wikimedia does. So over the last three years, we've shared tens of thousands of um, images with Wikimedia Commons, um, and increasingly we've been sharing our data with uh, Wikidata. Um, and this has proved quite an efficient and effective way of us um, improving access to our data sets. And it's also been a way for us to enrich our data and connect it with a much wider network of knowledge. Um, so we've currently got around 40,000 Wikidata items that um, are either directly about things in the National Library of Wales collections or related to people um, that are connected in some way to our collections. Um, and a couple of years ago now, we appointed a Wikidata visiting scholar who's been working with us ever since. Um, and that is Simon Cobb, who is in the room here somewhere. There he is. Um, so together we've kind of been working to, to share our data sets on Wikidata. And one of the sort of big ideas that we've had is generating and um, compiling data about the book trade in Wales. Um, and the way we've been doing this is sharing information about printed collections um, at the National Library and combining that with data from third party resources such as the British Book Trade Index. So one of the main um, collections that we've been looking at is um, historical Welsh newspapers and journals. Some of those journals are academic journals. Um, and starting to sort of build up this database that you can search by date or by place, by author. But it also starts to build up this sort of um, history of the publishing landscape in Wales, particularly in the 19th century. So it's a great example of giving access to data for learning and for research. So this brings us to the sum of all Welsh literature, which is kind of a, kind of a grand title. Um, but really what we mean when we say the sum of all Welsh literature is every book or printed item ever published in Wales that's of Welsh interest, um, which is, I kind of guess, very similar to the, the Swedish model. Um, we reckon that's around 350 to 400,000 items at present. Um, depending on whether you take separate editions as individual <laughs> items or if you just look at the individual books. And we realised that the work that we were doing with journals and newspapers um, and, and the authors and publishers around that was kind of setting the foundation uh, for this work. And we think that this is not only going to open up a whole realm of possibilities in terms of um, <laughs> providing access for researchers and educators, people that want to make applications, um, but generally just a great way to give increased access to, to our data. And that's before we even start thinking about how this could apply to Wikisite. So, step one, um, which obviously with 400,000 items is going to take quite a long time. Um, but initially we want to create um, basic data for as, as many of these books as we can including authors and publishers, we want to avoid strings as much as possible 
Um, so we want to get as much information as we can about the authors and the publishers. Um, we'll obviously have the titles of each book, ISBN and other identifiers that we can connect along the way. Um, so that's phase one. Phase two um, will be providing more ways of describing the works. So we want to see the addition of descriptive data, such as genre, a genre, main subject, um, and we're already looking at ways we can do this. Um, Simon's been working on ways of extracting uh, main subject from the titles of the works, which in some cases is possible. Um, so that's phase two. And then phase three, which is kind of blue sky thinking, this is a long way off, uh, but the National Library is currently embarking on a major campaign to digitise a lot of these books. And that's going to mean that there's OCR data, which we could potentially <coughs> tag um, and connect using this linked data. There's even the potential to use um, something like IIIF to point people to specific parts of pages um, to, to provide very specific citations. So we've already started um, experimenting with this data and we've created Wikidata items for everything published by one publisher as a kind of test case and that's the University of Wales Press. Um, and we've used this for a number of reasons. Um, a, a previous project on the Welsh language Wikipedia means there are Welsh Wikipedia articles for pretty much all the books in this collection. Um, and we've still got a lot to do in terms of structuring the relationships between the editions of the works and stuff, but already you can see um, in terms of research, we're beginning to see the potential of this data, um, and this visualisation simply shows um, the publisher and then the authors and the works that they've, they've published. Um, this one, which I thought was nice and psychedelic and kind of San Francisco-esque, uh, this one shows the total output of that publisher over time, so you can see when they've been most active, and then the colours that you represent um, individual authors, so you can begin to see which authors were active over a period of time and how many authors were publishing with the publisher at any given time. Um, so it's really interesting data that we're starting to be able to explore. <coughs> so how does this map to Wikisites past, future and present? Um, that's really the reason why I'm here. I want to find out um, and I'm hoping there'll be lots of discussions um, about this following our talk. But it seems to me that to be a success, Wikisite is going to need lots of data about books, um, bibliographic data. Um, so that's why we're doing it. And, and we feel that it's come at a really good time. Um, perhaps it's going to act as a test case. Um, and with, again, hundreds of thousands of um, items, potentially, um, perhaps it can act as a, a sort of focal point for discussions around how this data is structured, what's going to be acceptable to the Wikidata community. Um, so yeah, we're really kind of looking forward to, um, to those discussions. And if, if anyone wants to help, you can have access to the data. Do come and talk to me or Simon and um, we be happy to have those discussions. So my initial instinct is that this data, bibliographic data, it belongs in Wikidata rather than petitioning Wikimedia's sort of open data ecosystem. Um, as long, of course, as we can build the tools that we need specific to Wikisite on top of that. But whatever form it takes, um, we just want to make sure that the National Library of Wales isn't left behind. Um, if Wikipedia introduces structured citations in some way, we want to be there, ready to help facilitate the creation of good citations about Wales and its people so that we can improve the quality of content about Wales on Wikipedia. And sharing our data in this way also opens up a two-way street. Um, it can feed into Wikisite, it can be an access point for the public, um, but it also um, opens up a pathway where people can come back to our website, to our catalogue, um, and it provides us with a way of pulling useful information, additional information from third-party sources back into our own catalogue. So, in terms of what would help um, maybe more integrated into Wikisite activities. Well, I think this is a great start. Um, I think generally we just need more, more discussion. We need a central place where we can come together as a community on Wiki and discuss, share documentation um, and collaborate. Um, and generally open this discussion up as widely as possible. 
with um, with the Wiki Wikipedia community, Wikidata community, so that everyone's really talking about this and that we're all on the same page in terms of where we're going. And that's it. Um, so really, I'm I'm here to learn. I'm all ears. So if anyone's got any suggestions, uh, comments, or questions, do please come and find me. Hi, I'm Pete Forsyth, and I'm working on a, a project called Newspapers on Wikipedia. Um, and we have a map that's very similar to this, the slide that you showed before. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about how you're using the mapping uh, with Wikidata, how it's like how it's useful to be able to be, like how you're visualizing things and how it's useful. To be. Yeah, I think um, being able to display things on a map is a is a it seems very popular. Um, people like to be able to search for things geographically. It's, it's a good sort of visual aid um, for searching data. Um, initially, we kind of use mapping as a, as a way of ex uh, explaining to people how Wikidata can actually um, enrich your own data because if you've got place name tags um, in metadata, for example, you might not have um, actual coordinates and wiki mapping to Wikidata can provide that. So that, that was kind of the one of the early sort of reasons for it and a great example um, of showing how Wikidata enriches things. Um, but I think going forward as the National Library, we're kind of thinking about new ways in which we can uh, provide access to our collections um, and being able to display things chronologically, geographically across all our collections is something that we're really interested in, in having these different interfaces and landing points for people. So um, yeah, that's really what's behind it. What can you say about your experience in talking to library people about Wikimedia and Wikidata? How open are they? Um, pretty open. It's, it's interesting. Well, initially, when we said we were going to share this data, there were questions from, from our collections people about uh, potential problems with rights on some of the data, even though it's data in our catalogue, sometimes it's enriched from third-party sources. Um, so we've kind of stripped the data right back to something that we feel comfortable. We're not breaching any terms of contract or copyright or anything. Um, but in terms of linked data, there's a lot of interest um, from librarians and met metadata people. Um, and using Wikidata seems to be a very cost effective and um, easy way for us to experiment with linked data without um, the expense and, and the investment of doing what you guys have done, which is where we want to be eventually, but we kind of see Wikidata as, as, a, as a way of starting off. Yeah, it's, it's great to see this. this as a, thank you. Okay. Uh, just a quick question. I, uh, Luca Martinelli from Wikimedia Italy. Just a quick question. How, uh, how does come into play the representation of your own well, it's, it's a question for both you and also the Wikimedia Search uh, colleague. Uh, how much does, it, does your nation and your uh, cultural representation on Wikidata come into, come into play into this kind of uh, thing? Like, how much librarians are, um, in, in a way, uh, aware that they are going to portray also their, their culture in this way? Um, for me, I think we're really aware of that, um, and that's one of the main reasons why the National Library of Wales is involved with Wikimedia generally. It's about um, portraying our nation, who we are, um, expressing that individuality as a nation, as a people. Um, but also in terms of I mean, a lot of our metadata, even though we're the National Library of Wales, it's, it's only in English. By creating Wikidata out of our metadata, it's available in all sorts of languages, including Welsh. Um, so, yeah. I have a question about the new kinds of services available that are uh, now available because you put this data on Wikidata. As a national library, do you see in the future the library recreating those kind of services or depending on uh, Wikimedia Foundation to provide them to future patrons? How do you think about that question? Okay, so 
strategically, our thinking at the National Library is that we do eventually want some kind of linked open data layer that sits on top of our curated catalogue. Um, however, all the great tools and visualisation um, things that are being generated within the community and by volunteers are a really great way of showing the potential of that and helping us um, gain momentum to get funding and support for something bigger that we, we implement ourselves. I think that's all we have time for. We'll move to the next session. Thank you, Jason. Hey, thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Bruce Washburn uh, from OCLC. If you're not familiar with OCLC, you might have heard of WorldCAD or VOF or maybe even ArchiveVid. Um, and Honor Moody for, uh, from Harvard Library. We're going to talk about a uh, project we worked on over the past year or so, um, started last uh, November, so exactly a year ago, and we were looking at how to, you know, practically work with cataloging bibliographic data, authority data, and elite data way. So we were looking at using Wikibase for that. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, Jason just talked about these same two questions of how does our how does that work map to to uh, wiki sites, past, present, and future. We think some of what we learned would apply to that uh, roadmap, that uh, risk-benefit analysis of the future for, for Wikisite, just lessons learned from how we, we managed our experience and worked with libraries to, to carry out our work. So nothing too specific yet about that, but I think it relates. And this other one is even a little bit more vague. I think that's, you know, we're just here to learn how to engage more with the Wikisite community, and I'm just going to talk a little bit more about that in just a couple minutes. So this prototype project we started last November and finished up in September of this year. It involved 16 OCLC member libraries. And as I said, the, the objective here was to, to look at a way to engage with our data, but in a, in a real linked data way. And we've, we've all had some experience with this over the years. OCLC's had various linked data efforts that we participated in. And in this case, we opted to use Wikibase. Well, for, for starters, <coughs> we only had a year, and we weren't going to write any software we could help it, if we could avoid that. So um, we had a federated instance of it, and I think that what our approach to federating that separate instance of Wikibase might relate to the Wikisite roadmap for the future. Um, for a variety of reasons, uh, we wanted to evaluate the software. We hadn't worked with it directly. Uh, and we've used Wikidata, but we hadn't worked with the software itself. We wanted to have our community, our 16 member libraries, participate in the process of evaluating, creating new properties, property entities, debate those, argue about those, change our minds about those. We wanted to do that quickly and in a way where we weren't interfering with the, the Wikidata world. And um, yeah, limit the visibility of some of the participant data. They weren't quite ready to share it in Wikidata. Maybe overline this is that it's not a dumping ground uh, rule for Wikidata. We weren't really ready to, to push the data there, but when we thought it was relevant or might be important for the future, we were linking back to corresponding entities in, in Wikidata. <coughs> so generally the focus of this effort was about collaboration. And I have to say the Wikibase software, it is just wonderful to work with. It's the best software I've, I've used, um, frankly. It's just, you lean in the, in the direction of collaboration and communication when you're dealing with that software. So that was, that was great, and we had these great discussions every week in office hours on some particular problem to solve. It was a lot of fun. The libraries that we were working with were primarily interested in reconciling strings. So a, a local authority file. Take those strings and see if there is an identifier for an identified entity for that person or organization in the wider world, get that identifier into their system, or create a new entity if it wasn't there. And so we explored the reconciliation process. We tested Open Refine for doing that, and the Open Reconciliation, uh, Open Refine endpoint from Wikidata, and the Wikibase UI for editing, uh, with some additions to it, some extensions, because that great platform is easy to build things on. So that's my engineer's perspective, and for a real world perspective, <laughs> it's on. Hi everyone, I'm actually just also going to start with a quick background about me to give you some context for some of what I'm going to say. I've spent most of my career doing artisanal bibliographic metadata, 
Um, I, in a special collections context, uh, primarily printed monographs, although I have cataloged everything from archival collections to zines. Um, and I take it as a given that the rate of scholarly production and the production of resources that libraries will be interested in describing has outpaced the capacity of current um, cataloging practice to describe. And that really the um, only viable way forward that I see at the moment is through um, linked open data and FAIR data for our data. And we're going to have to open up our internal models. And that the reality is that there's already a lot of competing models within the library community that we're going to, I think, and that data modeling is hard. And that was kind of one of the takeaways of the project. Um, and I think actually some of the property um, and data modeling conversations that we had will look really familiar to anybody who has um, looked at the discussion pages for Wiki Project Books or any of the write-ups of the um, different projects in the recent ARL white paper. Um, I do think I've got some translations for one issue. I think at least part of that has to do with the collapsing of the Ferber level, WEMI levels within the various linked data projects. Um, and then there's also the um, dates, um, corporate bodies, uh, relationship roles. There's different ways to model that. Um, I have lost track of my, um, where I'm at. Um, but one of the, um, okay. Sorry, I didn't notice that there were notes up on the screen before. This might get a lot easier. Um, so um, basically, uh, the other thing for Link, that linked data is going to give us going forward is that um, it really benefits both discovery, but also um, has real benefits for increasing our capacity to describe things as it removes data um, redundancy, which is prevalent in current metadata creation. Um, and um, Oh, and now I've touched it and it's all gone terribly and I've lost the notes, so I'm going to have to back to where I was before. Um, oh, with the clicker? Oh, no, I just had too many notes on the one screen. I was, I was insufficiently concise for myself. Um, so anyway, but um, we've got these data modeling issues. Um, they will resonate to those of you who've been working in other projects. Um, and sort of the biggest takeaway was actually that... Um, where we probably need to go is being better about articulating the data modeling decisions that we make so that when groups make different decisions, we can then describe those decisions in maybe even machine readable ways that would allow us to use and reuse data across domains without necessarily losing semantic meaning or knowing when we are giving up semantic meaning because the gain of being able to say ingest a large data set <laughs> is greater than the risks of maybe muddying the precision of the um, sort of source model. And I think that this is um, going, and I think that for libraries in particular who have some very good reasons for having um, real semantic granularity in their data models and uh, maybe even very good reasons why they would fundamentally disagree with the modeling decisions that somebody else makes, the federated wiki-based model is going to make the most sense because they're going to want the control over the semantics even if they don't necessarily want control over the data that they produce. They want to allow other people to use and reuse it and they want to reuse others, but they need to be able to, for some reason, maintain a sort of small corpus of very, very precision data. Um, and so I think to get there, we're also going to need sort of more tools. Um, and this was the retriever. This was designed sort of after the fact. Um, I think at the time, quick statements. Oh, I'm just, yeah, so federation, I think that's the only way libraries are going to go. Baby steps, they're not willing to cede control of their data just yet. And this would also provide a possibility of the various Wikimedia projects, whichever of the scenarios go for, um, ingesting data as needed for Wikimedia projects um, without the dumping ground issues and alleviating librarian fears. For, for, well, I could say more if that's, was that 15 or was there still time for questions? Well, you have Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, I thought I was had like totally chewed through all my time. Um, yeah, so I think we um, do want to provide mechanisms for you for reuse of data um, and tools to do that. I really like the Wikimedia um, Wikibase extensions for a lot of that. You guys have done some amazing things that um, libraries probably should have done a long time but didn't. Uh, and um, 
And the, li the lessons learned, I think, also, there were, which I didn't get to, is really there's a lot of anxiety about property modeling amongst librarians. They're a little bit risk averse collectively. Um, and so people will be quick to say this is a problem, but they're hesitant to say this is a solution. And they're also maybe, with good reason, really wary of uh, breaking models, right? They don't want to like throw something out there that's going to break an existing model or cause downstream effects. Um, and I think we could probably learn from um, the more collaborative and sort of um, willing to try new things aspects of Wikidata um, and some of the Wiki projects. But we're not there yet, so a kind of third way of externally experimenting with this as we kind of get to know each other and think about kind of what we're really going to get out of it is going to be great. So thank you. Uh, thanks. This is what was a wonderful project to watch develop. What do you see as the right trade off between individual archives working together to compile uh, a more compact wiki base in a federation and letting everyone have a, a little core that they control? Like, are, do you envision a world where every archive has a little wiki base? Uh, my experience with archivists is they would actually really like that, but I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> I actually think archivists could benefit the best from rigorous data modeling, and that's not something or they, that they've historically done. Um, and I could really see some great benefits through some of these projects for expanding out. Like right now, archivists don't necessarily go looking for related material when they describe stuff, and I would really like to see a world where we could say automate related material based on identifiers um, so that that's something that's visible in every finding aid. Hi, um, this project Passive Retriever, do you have any plans or would you consider like, leaving this up permanently or releasing the code? Because this has any number of uses for any number of wiki data and wiki based projects. Um, we've, I've had that question before and I wrote the retriever and the code is really kind of horrible. <laughs> I, I didn't have much time and even if I had more time it still would have been pretty bad. But I, I would like to collaborate with others who can rework it and turn it into something more practically, generally useful, to add other targets instead of just VF and fast. You could imagine pointing at other things that aren't linked data uh, ready. Next question is here. We have time. Yeah, uh, you said, hi, my name is Mahmoud. Uh, you said earlier that uh, you think that the like publication of uh, works has outpaced the cataloging capacity for any one institution. I'm curious, like, what's the ballpark? What do you think is the max uh, capacity of, like, you know, the most uh, throughput capable institution out there? And where are we at now? So libraries haven't tried to catalog all the stuff for a long time. Um, we tend to use Parallel <coughs> Connection. We do a lot of create, up, you know, create something once and then reuse or enhance data. Um, you know, but I think one of the issues is historically we had a very focused corpus of what was sort of, particularly for research libraries, appropriate. But even my childhood public library didn't acquire certain things because they weren't considered of sufficient, you know, cultural value, right? And I think in the past, so it not only is more stuff actually being produced, but libraries have a broader understanding of what they should be collecting and what kinds of access they should be providing. And I think there's a combination. So I don't, I think it's just a matter of the sort of, um, you know, even static or decreased um, staffing on the part of libraries. Although I don't think we could do this even if we were in some magical golden age of like staffing. Um, <laughs> But that, you know, we, we need better tools and we need to do bet more with automation and um, machine-assisted reconciliation to get us these places. Um, and I think that that's another thing that I really like about the Wikidata tools, right? You do a lot of um, batch updates, but then you have tools and ways to kind of identify problem areas. And then sort of with Wikidata in particular, you can use the queries um, and visualization tools to identify places where we need to go in and remediate data. And that's kind of where I'm thinking of sort of how we can get this to a sustainable level, where we do a lot of computer automated um, data ingest transformation, and then we develop tools that allow us to identify the places where we need to really go back in and focus with humans.
<laughs> okay, hi, I'm Michelle Futornik from Stanford University. I'm the program manager for the Linked Data for Production Project, and I'm here with Christine Fernsever, which I just said wrong, <laughs> Eslau from Harvard University. And we're going to talk about um, opportunities that we see for collaboration among LD4P and Wikisite. Okay, so first, what is LD4P? What does that mean? Um, Linked Data for Production is a collaboration among Stanford, Cornell, um, Harvard, University of Iowa, and the Library of Congress, funded by the Mellon Foundation, to um, enable libraries to describe their materials using linked data to enable better discovery. Uh, we're in the second phase of our project now. Um, and what is, why do we call it linked data for production? Well, um, as Honor alluded to, we are in libraries when we describe materials, we are in a production environment. Um, and we want to make linked data an integral part of that, not just uh, one-off projects, but have linked data descriptions be part of our metadata production. So uh, why do we want to have linked data? Uh, this is an example from our previous project, one of our partners, Princeton University. They acquired this fabulous um, collection, which was the personal library of the philosopher Jacques Derrida. So tens of thousands of volumes, many of which were given to him and inscribed by the dedicators, and many of which are annotated uh, by Derrida himself. So it's a really rich collection for researchers who are interested in um, social and intellectual networks. Uh, but the way that we would describe these things now in MARC, machine readable cataloging, uh, our data is structured. So in this, this is an example of one of the title pages of the books with the dedication. So we know um, what the title of the book is, who the author was, and we know that there's a note about the dedication. But this data isn't linkable. There's place names, uh, there's personal names, and there's no way to link this to um, other sources of data about the same thing. So uh, these are the types of questions that scholars want to ask about this collection that we cannot answer right now without linked data. Um, so like what, uh, which philosophers were corresponding with Derrida and when and from which country are they, from which school of philosophy. All of this data exists on the web, but can't be tied together unless we describe our materials uh, in linked data. And even within the library world, we don't necessarily link to each other. So Princeton owns this personal library of Jacques Derrida, but Derrida's archives themselves are at UC Irvine, and there's really no link uh, between them. Even from the uh, Wikimedia and Wikidata page about uh, Derrida, refers to the archives at Irvine, but doesn't mention this personal library at um, Princeton. So how are we going about this? We have four main um, efforts. One is cr actually creating the linked data, where we're building a cloud-based tool based on the Library of Congress's linked data creation tool using VibFrame. And we're um, taking their tool and making it accessible to a broader group of libraries so that they don't have to find and install and maintain their own tools for creating data. And as part of that, we are um, building in links to external data, including Wikidata, which Christine is going to show examples of. And then the community aspect involves um, bringing in more libraries through the program for cooperative cataloging, and also um, interacting with um, related initiatives. So thank you to the Wiki site organizers for encouraging us to come today and start this conversation. And um, finally, discovery, where we want to be able to show the value of this linked data. So uh, what are the po potential opportunities for collaboration uh, between LD4P and Wikisite? We, we thought we'd look at um, what are the things that stick out that are different about um, both of our projects, and those might be areas where we could learn from each other, or maybe areas where we decide that we just need to remain separate in those ways, and then what are the areas where we're overlapping? So for um, LD4P, or the library world in particular, um, we're motivated by our library patrons. That's what's driving our use cases. We um, are looking mostly at, of course, books and other resources that are managed by libraries. Um, we do data modeling in a very um, uh, 
precise way where there's a lot of time spent on modeling before we implement the models and use them. And there are very formal processes for changing and developing those models. And there, there's also um, tight control over who can create information. So but, um, by contrast, the things that are um, different about Wikisite and the Wikimedia movement, um, Wikisite, um, initially driven by the citability use case, uh, the data model is the Wikidata ontology, of course, and the modeling is, has very flexible, um, open, quick evolution. And the idea that information is open to editing and changing by everyone is quite different from um, the library world. But we do have a lot of uh, common areas just from our, our general um, goal of making knowledge shareable and enabling new discoveries. We share that. Uh, we, we all believe in open access to metadata, meaning being able to see and use it, not although we differ in um, how it's created. Um, and we both are interested in processes for um, evolving a model and also for um, templates that enable implementation of these models. And we also are um, interested in reusable tools. Uh, provenance of statements is very important and also in the library world we're grappling with these same discussions about which inf information should be centralized versus federated. So these are some areas that we think uh, we could learn from each other in. And this requisite slide about um, LD4P and Wikisite covered sort of the commonalities there and, and what would enable us to engage more. Well, that's why we're here and uh, we want to learn um, more about how we can engage. So I'm going to turn it over to Christine to show some actual examples. So uh, as Michelle mentioned, uh, in this phase of the grant, we're creating and editing metadata in BibFrame. Um, so why are we looking at wik Wikidata? Um, not all the entities that are relevant to our resources are described in library authorities, nor can they be, at least not in a timely fashion or not maybe in the granular or structured way we'd like to. Um, when we've experimented with having catalogers work with structured data outside of these resources like what Honor and Bruce just described, uh, we've learned a lot about how we, how we may, might go about things differently and how we might leverage the results in ways that our current discovery mechanisms don't. <coughs> so now we'd like to show you how we envision catalogers using Wikidata entities with a basic example. Uh, in Synopia, um, uh, the editing environment that Michelle mentioned, we can configure profiles for describing specific material types or workflows and customize forms uh, to support the selection of external URIs as the objects of BibFrame properties. Um, and in this example, a uh, workflow that Astrid, our designer, who's somewhere around here, um, mocked up for us. Uh, uh, we're searching Sinopia for an existing description of David Lynch's film, Inland Empire, in 35 millimeter. And uh, this would be data that's been converted from Mark to BibFrame by a vendor. Um, the subject of the work uh, could be anything. In this case, we want it to be the, uh, an entity called the Inland Empire, which is the geographic region and not the railroad line, uh, which the cataloger can distinguish easily from these choices because we're showing what each of these is an instance of in Wikidata, along with the description text and any aliases. If cataloggers are, uh, if any cataloggers are present, uh, we can argue about the subject analysis aspect of this some other time. Um, and so in another lookup um, for the bid frame expression of property, which creates a relationship between a work and another work, Again, please hold your questions for the fervor chill out room. Um, <laughs> yes, the entities are limited to works here, not just any entity in Wikidata. And uh, we can show Wikidata properties that are relevant to works like country of origin so that catalogers can uh, disambiguate entities of this type when they have similar labels. So it's the film, not the magazine. Um, so right now these lookups are specs waiting to be implemented along with lookups to other resources. What we've got now uh, is spreadsheets um, and those handsome mock-ups and uh, lists of Wikidata classes and properties that we want to use and uh, YAML files for accuracy tests. Um, though the lookups uh, we just talked about will enable catalogers to integrate Wikidata entities into any workflow in Synopia, we've been looking at discrete collections, um, going with the idea of starting small that we've heard a couple times this morning. Um, to start our work in Wikidata, um, with an emphasis on those that aren't fully represented in MARC, 
those that offer the possibility of pairing metadata workflows with digitization workflows, and, and or those that call for use cases beyond what BibFrame addresses. I'm gonna quickly run through a few ideas. Um, if you've chatted with me about Wikidata before, you've probably heard this in your board of it, but um, so these are a few ideas that we've been bouncing around at Harvard, um, and we'd love to de develop these ideas further with the community or with our possible future with the median and residents. Um, so, uh, digitized maps. Um, the founding donation for the Harvard Map Collection is being digitized for its centen bicentennial. And um, besides exposing those images themselves via Wikimedia, we could also draw agents, historical place names that are in, uh, the, on the maps themselves, and so forth. In addition to all the obvious things like geographic coordinates and map inboxes. Um, we have the personal collection of Guido Adler, who, having been involved in the beginnings of musicology, was at the center of an international network of scholars and musicians before that was cut short by World War II, and his materials are a rich snapshot of those connections. Um, and like the example that Michelle showed earlier about Derrida, uh, we're answering, answering scholarly questions uh, that we can't answer with our metadata right now, even though the information's all there. Um, so the question of who was Guido Adler corresponding with um, in this very idealistic, inclusive world of early musicology is a question that came from music librarians at Harvard. So this is where my slides start to have a bunch of question marks. Uh, how do we represent individual instances of books in Wikidata? Is this more appropriate for a Wiki-based instance? Um, so if it seems like we've drifted from citable secondary sources into primary sources, it's because some of our most interesting collections are both at the same time. Um, okay, on the totally different musical end of things, uh, we have the Friedman Collection, uh, which is cassettes and VHS tapes of local punk and, punk and genre adjacent shows in Boston from the 70s through the early 90s. Uh, the finding aids tell us about which bands played together when, in which clubs, they, in, in clubs that don't exist anymore, and with digitization and potential collaborations with other local institutions and community organizations, this offers the possibility of describing the shifting musical landscape of Boston neighborhoods over time. Um, right now, when you use the finding aids, you kind of just hit control F and hope that you find a band that you know about. <laughs> um, so in the previous LD4 grant cycle, we built conversion tools for non-MARC formats that allowed us to generate big frame descriptions of films from the Harvard Film Archives film FileMaker database, uh, which isn't exposed on the web at all, um, and asked catalogers to perform manual reconciliation for director names against ISNI, as well as um, uh, genre reconciliation and so forth against uh, known vocabularies. Um, and when we were creating ISNIs for, uh, which are very focused, that's international standard name identifier, um, they're very focused on public identities and, uh, you know, their model is uh, sort of deliberately excluding bibliographic information. Oh, okay, skipping that. Anyway, cool, fun stuff. So. Yeah, so as part of the grant, we have funding to hire Wikimedia in residence, and I guess, well, all I can say is um, people used to think that California was an island, and our map of the Wikimedia movement might be slightly um, misunderstood, so we hope that this uh, Wikimedia in residence will be a guide for us to implement some of the things that uh, Christine talked about. Can you say, uh, when, will you, when do you expect to make a hiring decision about the Wikimedia and the residents, or would you like all of us to advertise the position? Uh, yes, um, uh, more advertising is good. Part of the um, problem, unfortunately, is uh, our institution's uh, reluctance to hire people that don't have the right to work in the U.S. because of visa and other um, sponsorship um, things so we're trying to work that out right now, but we would definitely, um, if if you can put the word out more, that would be much appreciated. Thank you. All right, I have. 
have my timer. I will start by saying I have a habit of speaking fast. I apologize. Um, so I'll start with just a quick description of what the Library Link Network is. Um, it's a set of services uh, in the library industry that publishes data to a shared network. Um, and so the Library Link Network connects um, different uh, decentralized local graphs of library data. All of this data is structured and machine readable. And then it's all uh, licensed back to the libraries with an open license, a creative a 4.0 international um, license. Um, and so this is a little bit about what it, how it works. Hold on, let me make all this appear. Um, so a lot of this data is sourced from MARC bibliographic records. Um, and so we take those records and we transform it into linked data resources. Um, and so uh, through this process, we define many different people, whether they're an author or a subject of a particular item. Um, we create linked data resources that describe them. Um, and then we do reconciliation both within the local graph itself and then across the network. Um, and that allows us to see which entities of these are unique to that institution or unique to the network and which of them are shared across the network. Um, and so from there, once the data is published, um, which we do publish um, in multiple vocabularies that you saw on the slide before, um, including schema.org, uh, the BibFrame Lite vocabularies, Dublin Core, Facebook Open, and Facebook Open Graph. Um, so once that data is published, then it's available for consumption on the web. Um, and so we work with many different service providers um, for this. And so um, one of the two exciting projects that I've been working on recently is mapping um, some people to Wikidata. And then I've also been working um, with the Internet Archive and their open library. Um, and so we've connected a Find It Near Me service to their item pages in Open Library. And then we're also separately um, working to provide Library Link Network members with free ebooks through their library service initiative um, using their structured data. So right now there are over 4,000 library uh, locations, so physical libraries uh, located, are located um, in the network, and that represents over 2,000 library systems in 38 states uh, with three statewide implementations, including Michigan, uh, Indiana, and Georgia. Um, and then we have uh, members in eight countries around the world. Um, so all together, these libraries have published now um, over 215 million links. Um, so those are all the links in their local graphs. And then between those links, there are over 5 billion links. Um, so the network is rather large already, and it's growing every day. Um, so this data is used in many different ways. Um, so if you think of the outside of the bullseye, we have uh, our data feeds and we have harvesters who are coming in and consuming that data organically um, or directly. And then we also have communities. Uh, so people in the library are partnering with uh, different partners, uh, like Dallas Public Library is working with uh, KERA, their public TV station, to embed their data on the, these websites. Um, so they use the data that way, but then they also are using it in their own websites and their own catalogs. And so that's how um, we got interested in Wikidata, um, because we've created an application um, that connects um, Wikidata into the library catalog, displays data from Wikidata, and then also complements it with data from that library's local graph. Um, so here's an idea of what that looks like uh, right now at DC Public Library. Um, so this is a prototype, screenshots of a prototype that is um, going live this week. Um, and so I can send another message to the listserv when it's ready to look out live. Um, but in the catalog, this is an enterprise catalog provided by Circe Dynix. There's a tab that you click called About the Author. And then when you click on that tab, um, you see at the top Wikidata displayed. Um, all about the author, Bell Hooks. Um, and then when you scroll down below, you'll see all the items um, from that library's local graph. Um, now what's great about Wikidata is that we're using it as a uniting identifier. Um, so at DC Public Library, for example, they had nine different Bell Hooks. Um, and so this allows us to solve that problem by connecting them all to Wikidata and then displaying everything that's connected to that Wikidata identifier for every item. Um, and so, uh, now we have an exciting opportunity um, and a big challenge. Um, so across the network, there are over 15 million people. Um, I know earlier, so we've been talking kind of about idea uh, items and item numbers. Uh, so to give you an idea, there are about 8.5 million uh, unique ISBNs on the network. Um, so that's, that's an idea of items. As far as people go, 15 million. Um, and uh, that can really vary depending on institutions. So at DC Public Library, we have about 200,000 people to map. Um, so we're faced with the question, how can we make meaningful connections um, 
and how can we do this on a broad scale for a lot of people in a short amount of time. Um, so I don't know about you, but I think that local data-driven mapping is very cute, like the seal. Um, so we started, oh my slides are a little squished. Um, so we started by creating a training data set of about a thousand people and mapping that manually to Wikidata. Um, so out of that, about 50 people um, did not match. Um, and then um, we also uh, mapped that to many different library link network resources, so we're almost to 2,500 um, resources mapped. Um, and we also created a larger data set that we're going to give, or that we gave Magnus, um, including those 1,000 people and another 4,000. Um, so we can use uh, so we can use make some match and then compare that to our approach. Um, so where we're at now, um, we have um, stats that are generated from the use of libraries data in the catalog. So DC Public Library has their widget, um, and the people who aren't matched just show those library connections without the wiki data. And then every day we get information about what items are viewed on their catalog, and then our crawler talks to another crawler that uses a parser called Parserator um, with additional algorithms built on top and then produces potential matches. Um, so that's what this looks like here. Um, so we have a Slack channel and then it, it produces potential matches um, and we can go through and confirm that with reactions and then those reactions are used to refine, to further refine uh, the algorithms. Um, and so here are a few examples. <coughs> I want to allow more time for questions, so I'm not going to go into specific problems, but I will say um, one interesting issue that uh, this has allowed us to find are different anomalies um, in library data, especially when it's coming from um, third-party sources, like so vendors will give uh, libraries records, and we're finding like, oh wow, all these mistakes look the same, I wonder if these records are coming from the same person. Um, so that's just a, a side note. Um, so we're, <laughs> we're going through... Um, and we're mapping all of this uh, live for DC Public and other libraries that are coming on with the widget. Um, so we've also asked people to give us ideas about what type of uh, people we should prioritize. And so these are a few groups of people that have been suggested. Um, our customers really like the New York Times uh, lists. We give them living lists of data. Um, so they want to look at people connected to those. Um, another data set proposed was um, really interesting. It's all the books that were checked out in Dublin. Um, in 2017, so we're looking to map authors related to those items, as well as a few other data sets that are all linked in these slides. Um, so we're also, as far as going um, wide and kind of getting those topical lists, we're also trying to go deep and trying to do full mappings of entire institutions. So here you'll see a variety of indexes of people um, from different participating libraries, um, and all of these people have volunteered to kind of be beta testers to try to do a full mapping. Um, now people are really just the tip of the iceberg um, because at the beginning you saw all those links uh, that I talked about. So um, people are just a fraction and we want to use this process and try to, try to scale it up um, to map different concepts and places and organizations um, that are also recognized as important through that data-driven lens of statistics. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities for collaboration. Um, we're collaborating with libraries right now to roll out the widget. Um, it goes live in DC and we have about 50 other members that represent about 200 library locations that will be on board in the next two months. Um, and then we're also going to be working with Magnus and Mix, Mix and Match to compare. Um, we really want to scale up and automate, so um, I'm new to the Wikisite community, um, so I'm really excited to hear your ideas on how you think we can collaborate. Um, especially if any of you have done automated entity rec reconciliation, um, I really want to get our rubric to a place where we can say for sure with an automated match that these two are the same thing. Um, and I'm hoping to be there by the end of the year. Um, and then of course there's bi-directional linking. So I'm just curious to know like how do you think um, it would be most helpful for Wikisite and Wikidata assets to link back to the library link network. Um, and then we will be opening up the Slack channels to librarians. Um, and that's just kind of like an exciting bonus because um, while it's fun, we don't really expect librarians to have to do the bulk of this work because it is such a massive undertaking. So we do want to automate as much as possible. Um, but we're hoping that a few power users can join us and help us refine those uh, rules that we're using for confidence levels. Um, and so that is the full presentation. <laughs> Hi, uh, Chris Freeland from the Internet Archive. Thanks, Gloria, for the shout out and the collaboration that we're working on. 
a couple of speakers have mentioned uh, working with librarians. I'm a librarian myself, and I'm curious what your experience has been working with the library community, specifically with librarians, and do they feel equipped to, uh, to, to sort of throw in on the, the work you're doing, or is there, a, is there a goal for a gap that we like, need to try to overcome? Um, there's definitely a gap that needs to be overcome, and we've been working on that for the last few years. I've seen it change, especially in the last year or so. People are starting to realize that they don't necessarily need a deep knowledge of linked data to get used to working with the tools to share it. Um, and I've also seen that we work with many different types of libraries. So we have academic libraries, we have public libraries, um, we have national libraries. Um, and so it really varies from those different types of communities. Um, but within each of those, there are power users. Um, and those people are helping to charge and lead the way. Um, when it comes to Wikidata specifically and this widget, um, I've noticed over the last eight weeks there's really two different types of reactions. There's somebody who's already on board and sold when before they even realize the data is coming from Wikidata. They're like, wow, this is awesome. I need this. Like, we have to have it. Um, and then there's people who are like, where does this data come from? Why doesn't it say Wikidata? Why doesn't this say Library Link Network? Is this trustworthy? Wait. Oh, and then I tell them that anybody can edit Wikidata and it'll be in their catalog within 20 minutes and then they like, so, but again, those aren't the bulk of people. They're really, it's like really every now and then I've noticed that it's kind of like reactions are one extreme to the other. I was curious to, to what extent, when you're doing the entity reconciliation, um, to what extent are you using VIF data either directly or, or in, in Wikidata, what your experience has been with that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so we use VIOF um, to the extent that it's already included in bibliographic records. Um, so if it has an active URI, we use that, and if it has an ID, then we meant a URI um, in their data. And so that's all, um, cre that's all connected to the people resources if it's already included in the MARC record. Um, but we haven't started to go through and do reconciliation to add that if it's not already there. Um, I saw that you, um, I'm curious for you to say a little bit more about the reference with, uh, the, I think it's the Dallas Library, Sherrington News Network, and mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious how that works and how they reference your data. Yeah, um, so it's their, it's really their data. Um, so they have their catalog, and then they have an abstracted layer, which is Library Link Network, um, that links back to their catalog with borrow it actions. Um, so that's a, one really important part of having this distributed model is that every library can create item links that resolve to their um, catalog and those links can be permanent and resolve to different systems over time. Um, so for Dallas Public Library, um, with, their, uh, with their local TV station, um, it started with the Great American Reads Challenge this summer. So they collaborated on a few different uh, set lists and then they embedded uh, that data they're just like iframe carousels, basically, um, with those borrow it links back to the catalog on KERA's website. Um, so they had a full web page with all these different borrow it links, and then DC Public Library saw an increase in checkouts and downloads of those items. So that collaboration led to a long-term partnership where now every month they're choosing a new topic. I think drug addiction is this month's topic. So then uh, they get all the items related to a specific topic and embed that on the website. Um, and then those borrow it links lead back to the catalog, and then they use statistics um, to track that usage. So you mentioned there were nine different identifiers for Bell Books related material, um, which it sounds like have been converged using a Wikidata identifier. Um, so there are still all, we, we still have those nine identifiers, they just all point to the one Wikidata identifier. Right. Um, and so those different versions look like bell hooks with capital B, capital H, bell hooks with lowercase, bell hooks with V off, bell hooks with LC and V off, because um, we do have very strict rules as far as how our hashes are made, which is how we do that network reconciliation. So, so given that you've done this mapping, what are you able to accomplish? Um, well, we're able to accomplish that widget that marries uh, everything into one, um, one interface. Uh, so before this, we had a related resources widget, which really would only show everything related to that one bell hooks identifier um, without pulling in all the other bell hooks. But after mapping all nine to Wikidata, um, that one widget shows everything that's connected to bell hooks in the in entire catalog. Yeah, thanks.
Yeah, well, uh, someone asked in the Etherpad, where, where are the slides? It's just sort of the same page that is used for announcing this talk. I just edited it, and so that's the, that's the presentation. Um, the motivation for this one is um, basically um, Corpora. Uh, I see them as a uh, thing that we can be doing that is more or less independent of the general outcome of the roadmap discussion. So you can work on, uh, you can, for the, the first scenario, you can basically consider all, everything cited from any given Wikipedia or any Wikipedia at all as a corpus. That's one thing uh, to look at this, so that's one way in which it can be curated and, and used. Um, and if you're looking at the, the uh, like, M size t-shirt, um, it is uh, specifically mentioning corpora, different kinds of corpora that could come from different directions. And if we're looking at the bibliographic uh, commons, well, it's clear that it will contain many corpora and they will have a certain level of completeness. And so the purpose of this talk is exploratory. So I don't have any recipe to share, although I was heavily involved in building that Zika corpus. Um, and uh, so this is intentionally a wiki page. So if you have further pointers to more uh, things, more corpora or more, more usages of those things that I'm um, mentioning, then just go in and edit. Um, yeah, so um, first, how can we define a Wikisite corpus? So, uh, well, I thought deeply, I had 12 hours on the flight. So, um, the result is here. It could be things that have been authored, published, cited, or, uh, and or archived, uh, or maybe used as a reference in Wikimedia platforms. Uh, somebody's making gestures, you can also talk to me. I, um, um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, okay, so yeah, that's one way to define things. And I call these primary corpora because they are more or less close to the bibliographic metadata models that we have been hearing about in the previous talks. Um, and they all come with their own, um, let's say, features and problems of interest uh, that uh, can actually uh, be interesting for many discussions that we're having here. Um, on that basis, one can define what I think uh, could be called secondary corpora, and they are potentially um, actually more interesting than the initial ones, because they already try to combine two different, let's say, elements of the data. So, you could uh, look, for instance, at things that are, well, the definition for the secondary corpora, or my definition for that is things that are related to uh, things that form primary corpora. So if we then go through the list, and I have a long list here, I'm not sure I can actually manage all of that in time, uh, but the point here is to, just to make you aware of this kind of uh, line of thought, and uh, then we can zoom in. Uh, also, if you see something on the list that is not showing on the screen yet, and you want this to be discussed, well, just, just let me know. So we can go by topic. The classical example, already mentioned in many um, like wiki site related talks is the Zika corpus. I'll not talk about it this time. There's a link to wiki project Zika corpus that zooms into that in detail. There's also a link to the Z uh, to the Scolia topic profile for the Zika virus, which is one element of the Zika corpus. And on that basis, I've actually uh, started a number of uh, corpora from scratch uh, last week, just uh, to illustrate um, the process. And you can look at how these things have been formed. Um, and so on. So one is about hypercholesterolemia, where you have too much cholesterol on your blood. Then uh, the companion is about hypocholesterolemia, uh, where you have too little. Uh, another one is about kakapo, uh, an endemic, heavily endangered bird in New Zealand, uh, where every member of the species is going to have a Wikidata entry soon. It's just 148 at the moment, and so yeah, very small by Wikidata standards, but Wikidata can hopefully help annotate this kind of corpus. Or Etsy, 
because, well, my kids just read a book about it, and uh, so it's this ice man that was found in the Alps, 5,000 years old, and uh, they needed a um, reading list uh, with further information, and so, well, I created that. Um, yeah, then, um, we, these were topics. You can also look at co-occurring topics. You have some examples in the Scolia uh, graph, and we will show some of those uh, in the next talk. Um, then you can also go for authors. So, for instance, uh, authors of things uh, that have been cited. So here is an example for Danish female authors. I'll basically not click on the links. There. I'll, I'll leave that to you. Uh, for those link, uh, links that are of interest to you. Or here, I have a um, um, visualization of uh, the output of seven people named Lee. Lee. Um, and one of them actually has a spike. They managed to have more than 50 uh, publications in several years, and so I suspect these are actually several people. Uh, but the data is imported from ORCID, and so the data is probably wrong at the ORCID end. Uh, then um, you can look at the institutions uh, that are related to the authors or that the authors are uh, affiliated with. So here is a uh, Wikidata generated list for people associated with James Mason University. You have similar lists for other universities. Um, <laughs> then we can look at things published in a given language. We just had a nice example for Welsh. Um, you can look at collections of things that form primary, like collections of things that form uh, primary corpora. And then again, the things that are cited from any Wikipedia or any Wikipedia article or uh, any subset of Wikipedia or so, they could be an, an example. There is Wikiproject Wikipedia sources that zooms into that. Um, you can look at items or properties that are required by uh, Wikidata items about things that form primary corpora. That was a bit complex, so I'll repeat it. Um, so, uh, or maybe I take an example. So, if we have an item about a, let's say, a book, uh, it is supposed to have an author, uh, except for um, exceptional circumstances, and uh, so if the author doesn't exist as an item, uh, but the, the property author on Wikidata requires that the uh, author be expressed as an item, well then you first have to create the item about the author. Uh, same thing as journals uh, or journal articles, they need to be published in a journal, or a journal or a book needs to have a publisher, and so you first need to create those items in order to be able to, uh, create, uh, to make that statement. In Wikidata not notability terms, this is called a structural need. Um, yeah, so um, there is a, a, a list of bibliographic properties, uh, a whole table, um, and all of these properties are potentially within the remit of uh, becoming uh, the target of a corpus. And uh, Pro wiki project books and wiki project periodicals, they were all kind of already kind of mentioned here, they also zoom in on, on some of that and uh, collect certain corpora. Um, yeah, then tools. Around all these things that I've mentioned, there are tools. Uh, there are many more missing. Many more. Some people have wish lists for uh, tools that uh, they wish <laughs> would exist or functionalities. But we have lots of tools already that do lots of things. Um, I've just pointed out uh, two here. And also, I would like to mention that work on the corpora actually stimulates the development of many of those tools. So um, the simple existence of such a corpus and someone wanting to apply a certain methodology consistently across uh, a number of items or properties or so, um, has stimulated, the, uh, well, first, it has raised awareness for the need of, uh, for such tools and it, uh, in conversations with people who build tools. Um, it has led to the development of a number of tools. Um, then uh, we can look at uh, things like Wikimedia citation templates that treat different references more or less as uh, in, in a certain way. So the different uh, citation templates, cite web, cite book, cite journal, they already classify um, references or, or sources in a, in a certain way, and we can uh, build on that. We can regard that as a corpus. Um, then we can look at the licenses, and there will be a lightning talk by Ina uh, about what that enables in terms of reuse. Um, we already had, Dario had his slide 17, statements about articles uh, from the New York Times or Daily Mail, and things like that. We can create timelines of publications. So here is an uh, a timeline for publications about invasive species, or uh, you can get the same for the Zika corpus, of course. Um, and uh, here, for some of those things, it's important uh, to uh, mention that people did not actually build the timeline. It's just the side effect of um, creating information that has something like a publication date. So some of those things that you see here, they are actually just side effects. Also, if you look uh, in the next talk, we're going to zoom in on the 
our Scolia page about this event. It makes use of information that wasn't uh, entered into Wikidata to just specifically for this event. Um, but uh, it can bring together different things, like the participants of the event, they have written things, and those things have topics, and so we can bring uh, the topics together to give the event a topic, or some, some sort of a flavor of, the, of a topic. And many of those things uh, happen here with these corpora that I've um, outlined. Another thing we could be doing is, for instance, look at things translated by the same translator. I, I give one example here. What we don't do yet is, uh, but would be very uh, much in, within uh, the remit of um, Wikisite, is bring type specimens uh, of biological taxa or minerals into uh, Wikidata. Because type specimens are defined in the literature. There is a specific publication that declares a thing as a type specimen. We have the species in there already, and so we could ju just make the link. I uh, ran the query, you can run it. Uh, there's zero hits for the moment um, for individual type specimens. So we can change that here. <laughs> Um, and you can also look at things like research published last week or at any uh, time period or, and so on. Um, I have a number of uh, considerations what you should have in mind when you build corpora, like what is already there, how can you use that, and my basic re recommend recommendation is try to intersect with those things that I've already outlined above. Uh, so try to see whether the corpus that you plan to build could actually start out as a sub-corpus of one of the existing corpora and then you can scale from that because that means you can get collaboration uh, from others who are working in corpora already. And if that involves uh, creating new properties or revising data models, well then there are community discussions. I haven't mentioned shape expressions, but it's, uh, it's listed somewhere yeah, here. Um, we're different, we have different mechanisms for quality control, um, and that might actually also be one of the reasons why people built corpora. So one of them would, could be for discovery, others could for just research assessment, um, so many institutions don't have any idea of what the recent publications by their people are. Wikidata Scolia can give them uh, such lists. And yeah, uh, maintenance quality control is very important. So I see my time is up, and so I'm looking forward to discussion. <laughs> Has anyone edited this page? I can just check, but uh, <laughs> okay, I'll check later. Because I'm, I'm really interested in more input on this. Um, Daniel, I really like um, that you're pointing out that all this uh, visualization things like timeline and um, geo referencing and so on, they're also just side effects of building Cobra. Um, yeah. um, so, how do you feel, as I uh, also triggered this um, some minutes ago? us as libraries for um, not just making use of this, but also um, enhancing or building on, on developing these tools here. So what are the feelings? I mean, you have been in this project so long, and um, how do you go, do you see the direction we are going at? Um, we don't have much time. I would love to discuss this in time, but in short, uh, I'm very excited about possibilities of doing this together. So uh, that's my feeling. <laughs> you asked for, for my feeling. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, well, how are we? Oh, yeah, I'm going to kind of go out of the box a little bit over here. I, I work at CU Boulder in faculty affairs, a lot of focus on scholarly works, and I think you know, a lot that seems like a lot of focus that's going on over here and what's in Wikidata. I'm wondering how can we extend this to go beyond scholarly work. So if a, a study happens that promotes the creation of a certain product, and then a corporation or another kind of agent you know, starts building that product, then other entities, you know, things like people, politicians, start tweeting on it or promoting these products, and people start consuming these things, do you kind of see a, a goal of Wikidata and Wikisite to start capturing that so it actually go a lot more broader than just scholarly academic things? Well, again, this is a question much broader than the time I have to address here. Um, but I, I have a number of inroads into that. One of that is some of the things I didn't mention, uh, and also one of, some of the things uh, that Dark already stressed, but his site is not just about uh, scholarly publications. And uh, so I don't know where this impression comes from, um, but uh, it, well, I have some ideas, of course. Uh, but um, the, 
it should be clear, and if it wasn't clear, so I'll repeat it. It is not just about scholarly publications, it's about uh, references, things that can be cited in general, and that should be cited in an appropriate context. Second, you can uh, look for, uh, just to give some examples of non-scholarly things, you can look for things that were published in extinct languages, and, and here I would include papyruses and, and stone inscriptions and things like that. Again, they often tend to have a scholarly context, but it's the different one than the classical journal articles and things like that. Another inroad is um, Wikipedia, not Wikidata, not Wikisite yet, have found their way into national educational policies in a number of places. Uh, I think Wales is an example, Macedonia is an example, the, the, the former Yugoslav one. Um, and uh, there are some other, Czechia is an example, there are some, some examples like this. And so that has policy implications, so politicians were involved in this. and. Um, of course, uh, another aspect is since this all happens in the open and rather than in black boxes, it is much more visible and people do comment on all of these aspects. That is a short try to address this topic. Uh, hey Daniel, I'm Matt again. So I was gonna ask real quick. You said uh, like so you have the Zika corpus, right? Um, and you say here like scolia for quality control. But I'm curious what tools you use to sort of like uh, do ongoing maintenance on a corpus, right? Somebody comes in, changes the label, maybe a typo. How do you make sure that like you know it's keeping the quality up? Um, here, I have to repeat what others have said before. Um, at the corpora, well, the corpora are, are actually domain specific somehow, usually. Um, and so they need a certain domain expertise uh, for, and so I can't give general recommendations. So, but for the Zika corpus, for instance, um, I have by now <laughs> a little bit of expertise in this area. And so I know about uh, certain things. So for instance, microcephaly is an important thing to watch out for uh, or other brain uh, development defects. And uh, so I know where the literature about that sits. And so things like so that. just just for clarity, um, yeah, uh, I mean basically, like for the items themselves, do you just use a watch list and watch it very closely, or if you're maintaining many different corpora, how do you sort of like, you know, go look at aggregated changes to those those items? Uh, I use a variety of tools. Most of the time, I don't use watch lists. Watch lists don't work for me at all at the scales of millions of items on Wikidata. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, Sparkle queries um, work quite well, and so I have lots of maintenance queries that are um, toned into some of the core prime uh, that I've mentioned here, and so I can look for very specific things. For instance, if there are papers that have, uh, on the same position of the author list, they have an author item and an author name string. And so they should have only one, uh, prefer preferably the item. And so you have maintenance queries like this that can be very specific. And then uh, we also have lots of those constrained uh, statements and constrained violation reports that give you tens of thousands to things to work, of things to work on. Uh, for any given constraint violation, basically. And so we have a lot, and then we have, uh, we're exper experimenting with tools like Shex that basically describe a subset of RDA, RDF graphs um, in a way that uh, we, we say, for instance, a book edition should look like this. And then if it doesn't, then you can work on why this one doesn't look like it should be. And, and so there are lots of mechanisms. But we don't have a wiki project quality control. Every wiki project does it on its own right now. And uh, maybe we should think about something that is a bit more cohesive. Okay, thanks to our speakers for being on point and on time. Uh, we are actually done a few minutes early. Um, we uh, are gathering for lunch at noon. I understand that the caterers are very close to being done setting up, but you are welcome to uh, enjoy the fresher air outside of this room. Um, and uh, speaking of fresher air, the, uh, the organizing committee hears all and sees all that you tell us. Um, and we understand that the room is stuffy. Uh, the facilities people have adjusted the temperature and will have the doors open during lunch, so we should return to a fresher air, fresher and cooler air environment. So, um, uh, so 
no sleepy time. We want you to be um, uh, back promptly at one because we have the same kind of rapid fire situation as we did um, this morning after lunch. But uh, thank you all very much and enjoy your lunch. Am I missing anything? Oh, if there are if there are speakers who need access to Wi-Fi, um, come talk to one of us, and we'll we'll hook you up. Yeah, and if you're and if you are a speaker, be sure that you connect with your moderator to be sure that uh, everything's in order. Elizabeth will be moderating the next session on tools, so she is your woman. We'll see you back here at one o'clock.